Hello, everyone. So this uh, video is going to um, be the sample problems from um, section 5.5, the calorimetry section. We're going to walk through some sample problems. Okay. All right. So first one is a sample exercise 5.5 from page 181. This is heat capacity and specific heat. Okay, so it kind of goes along with this part of the notes here, the that that top part there. Um, how much heat is needed to warm 250 grams of water, that's about one cup, from 22 degrees Celsius, it's about room temperature, to near its boiling point, 98 degrees Celsius? The specific heat of water is 4.184 joules over grams degrees Kelvin. Uh, sorry, joules over grams Kelvin. Okay, one of the things in doing thermodynamic and doing calorimetry problems that I can't stress enough is you must, must, must understand and know what the variables are and like what they stand for. In other words, if you see something that's a specific heat, what variable is that? Okay, because that's going to tell you like which equation you're going to use and, and what stuff goes where. So you've got to learn what the like you got to learn what the variable is that matches up with what term. Okay. Um, that's super important. And the other thing is, is make sure you're watching labels with these. Okay. Labels are also going to be really important to help you out with this. So, um, okay. So the first one here, I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of organize and write down what they give me. So uh, the 250 grams of water is mass. So mass is, 250 grams of the water. Okay. Um, all right, it tells us, uh, let's see. Okay, to warm it from 22 degrees Celsius to near its boiling point, 98 degrees Celsius. So we can calculate delta T, right, by taking the final minus the initial temp, right? So delta T is going to be 98 degrees Celsius minus 22 degrees Celsius, which is going to give us 76 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, Specific heat of water is, so specific heat is C sub S. Joules over grams Kelvin. All right. Now. If we look into, oh, uh, what are we looking for? What are we trying to solve for? How much heat? Heat is Q. So we're looking for a Q. So we've got CS, we've got a delta T, and we've got a, a M. So what equation are we going to use? Oh, that's our Q equals M cat, right? Okay, now we just got to watch our labels. So our mass is in grams, and that's fine. Our CS joules over grams. Uh, now, we've got Kelvin here, right? But our temp is in degrees Celsius. So we want those in the same. And remember, because it's delta T, we can just swap it out. So we can swap either one. We can leave this Kelvin, or we could make that degree Celsius. And we can, or we can change the delta T, 76 degrees Celsius, because it's delta T is the same thing as 76K. So like that. 
And if you look, grams cancel, Ks cancel, which is what we want, we'll be left with joules, which is perfect because that's a energy label for Q. So we do the math. We get, let's see, 79,496 uh, joules. Significant figures. Uh, I would just go by the beginning numbers. We've got two here, two here. You don't use the CSs because those are, are, are uh, um, constants. Okay. So two significant figures would be 79,000 joules is your answer. There you go. All right. Part B, what is the molar heat capacity of water? Okay, now, if you look at this and you're like, well, we don't have any equation for molar heat capacity, right? This is where knowing the label concept comes in handy. C sub m. C sub m is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of an object, or sorry, required to raise the temperature of an object by one degree Celsius, the temperature of one mole of, an, of the substance by one degree Celsius, right? So we have a CS of water, right? We have a CS of water. What's the only difference between the specific heat capacity, the CS, C sub S, and the C sub M? Well, the C sub S is for one gram. The C sub M is for one mole. So if we want the C sub M and we have the C sub S, all we have to do is convert from grams to moles. Okay, we know what our substance is. It's water, right? So we're going from grams of water to moles. One mole water is 18 grams for one mole. That's just off the periodic table, you know, two times hydrogen plus the oxygen. And we just do the math. And we get joules over moles K. There we go. Simple as that. All right. That is the first sample exercise. Okay. The second one. Second sample exercise is about constant pressure calorimetry. Uh, this one is the sample exercise five six off of page one eighty two. This one gets a little more, a little more involved. All right, when a student mixes fifty milliliters of one molar hydrochloric acid and fifty milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide in a coffee cup calorimeter, the temperature of the resultant solution increases from twenty one degrees Celsius to twenty seven point five degrees Celsius. Calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction in kilojoules per mole of HCl. Assuming that the calorimeter loses only a negligible quantity of heat, that means it doesn't really lose much heat, and the total volume of the solution is 100 milliliters. The density of the solution is one gram per milliliter, and then its specific heat is 4.184 joules over grams Kelvin. All right, a lot of information there, right? So let's get organized. Let's, let's write down and just kind of organize and see what we have. So the first thing is we have we have two volumes, right? We've got um, the volume of the HCl, which is, well, the volume and the molarity, 50 milliliters of 
one molar HCl, right? And then uh, the volume of the sodium hydroxide, which is uh, 50 milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide, right? So we've got those. Uh, and then they also tell us this a little bit later, even though we could we could have figured it out ourselves, but total volume, just a combination of those, 100 milliliters, right? Okay. Uh, let's see what else do they give us. They give us the temperature of the resultant solution increases from, okay, so we know what we can do. We can calculate our delta T, our final minus our initial. So this uh, comes out to be 6.5 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, what else do they give us? Uh, let's see. Density. They give us a density of one gram per milliliter. Uh, they give us the specific heat is the specific heat of water, which again, if they didn't give it to us, we would assume that because it's a solution problem but they did tell us, so it's 4.184 joules over grams kelvins. All right, uh, let's see what else. Um, they gave, um, what are we looking for? What are we trying to solve for? Calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction in kilojoules per mole. So we're looking for delta H in, and this is going to help us later, kilojoules per mole. All right, a lot of info. So when they give you a lot of stuff and, you know, and you're maybe not sure where to go, one of the that, well, this is the way one of the ways I do, and I've kind of showed you with with other problems throughout the year. But start with what you're looking for. Figure out what you need to solve for that. So, for example, what do I need to do to solve for my delta H? I need kilojoules and I need moles, right? Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, Enthalpy change for the reaction in kilojoules per moles of HCl. That way we know what we're talking about, moles of what. So I need the kilojoules and I need to know the, the number of moles of HCl in this deal. Okay. Um, what, are, what are the kilojoules? Well, kilojoules are energy, correct? Uh, in this case, it'd be heat energy. So the kilojoules are going to be Q. So we need to find Q. Okay, we need to find a Q. Now, what else do we have here? Well, we've got some volumes and some molarities. We've got a change in temp. We got a density, we've got a CS. So the most likely, if you look here, we've got CS and Delta T, correct? So most likely what we're gonna wanna do is we're probably gonna wanna use the Q of the reaction uh, equation. Uh, now it's Q equals negative M cat okay. all coffee cup calorimeter solution stoichiometry is going to be Q equals negative M cat the reason being if we go back to the notes it's this deal it's the Q of the solution because we're going to be all of the information we've got here is for the solution, not for the actual reaction. Like the CS is for the solution. The change in temp is for the solution. 
and the solution, the Q of the solution is negative Q of the reaction. So you could do you could do negative Q of the reaction equals MCAT either way, but you put the, I put the negative over here because then you're just solving for the Q of the reaction. Okay. All right. So let's look and see what we need. We need a mass, a CS, and a delta T. We have the CS and we have the delta T. Right? We have those. We need mass. Okay? We need the mass of this. So how do we calculate the mass? Well, that comes from our density and our total volume. Okay. You take the total volume. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do the, the density equation. Density equals mass over volume. Solve for mass. Or you can just take the volume total here like this. Remember, why are we taking the volume total instead of these? Well, because we're finding the we're finding the Q of the solution, which would be negative Q of the reaction. Everything's about the, the, the whole solution here. So the whole solution is 100 milliliters. Okay. What's our density? Density is for the solution. Our density, we're already in the right label. It's converting milliliters to grams. It's one gram per one milliliter. So 100 milliliters of this solution. Now, the reason I'm, you actually wouldn't have to show this step. You could just change the labels, but I'm showing you so you know what you would do if the density isn't oh, isn't one. Okay, so it'd be 100, you have 100 grams of the solution. Okay. So um, now we can plug all that up into here. Negative, our mass, our CS, and our temp is in degrees Celsius, but remember we can just flip flop that because it's delta T, our change in time. So we're going to put 6.5K. Okay, now if we look, K's cancel, grams cancel. So we do our math and we get Q of the reaction is going to be uh, negative 2,719.6. Uh, and the label we're left with is joules, right? Okay. Um, now, We've got our Q, right? Um, so, but our Q, um, our Q needs to be in kilojoules. We've got it in joules, correct? So we're going to do, we're going to convert this from joules to kilojoules. This is just metric to metric. So we get our Q of our reaction, negative 2.7. Uh, 2. So significant figures, um, it doesn't have it in here I, I don't know if it had it in the book or not. Um, in my notes, I did, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, in my notes, I did two significant digits from the 50. Um, I don't know if there were technically decimals after those in the book or something, but I'm just going to go with what I had. So I did two significant figures. So I did negative 2.7 kilojoules. All right. Now, how do we get moles of, of hydrochloric acid? Well, that comes from a different unit, from information we learn from a different unit. That comes from, that's why they give us these molarities. How many moles of just the hydrochloric acid do we have? So we are going to use 
molarity to convert volume to moles. So we know that we had 50 milliliters, right, of the one molar. So I'm going to do, um, let me move this up a little bit here. So I'm going to do 50 milliliters. And I'm going to use the molarity, which remember molarity is moles over liters, right? So when you get this into liters, so I'm going to convert milliliters to liters first. Okay, now that I'm in liters, I can do use the molarity. So our molarity is one point oh mole over one liter. Okay, then uh, oh, actually, nope, I'm done. The moles of hydrochloric. So we end up with 0 0.050 moles of hydrochloric acid. So then solve for our delta H. Okay, by doing delta H is going to be the Q over moles of HCl. So we get our Q, negative 2.7. kilojoules over our moles of HCl which finally gives us an answer of negative 54 if I'm doing two significant figures kilojoules per mole of HCl Okay. Now, I know that seems like a lot, but remember, a lot of this was just organizing and writing down givens as well. I'm just converting. So this problem here is a perfect example of why it's really, really important to watch your labels. I would always put your labels in the equation so you can see where stuff is canceling to make sure you're getting the label that you need to have it in. And the labels even give, gave us really the clue. It gave us the equation to solve for our enthalpy change, the delta H. Okay. All right. The second one. We do have one more. Okay. So that one, the second one went with the constant pressure calorimetry, this stuff here, solution uh, calorimetry. The third one is going to go with the bomb calorimetry. Okay. All right. Sample exercise 5.7, page 184. Methyl hydrazine, CH6N2, is used as liquid rocket fuel. The combustion of methyl hydrazine with oxygen produces nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide gas, and uh, liquid water, uh, based on this equation. When 4 grams of methyl hydrazine is combusted in a bomb calorimeter, the temperature of the calorimeter increases from 25.00 degrees Celsius to 39.50 degrees Celsius. In a separate experiment, the heat capacity of the calorimeter is measured to be 7.794 kilojoules over degrees Celsius. Calculate the heat of reaction for the combustion of uh, a mole of CH6N2 of methyl, methyl hydrogen. So let's break this down again. Let's, let's organize ourselves, do our givens. Okay, so our uh, givens, we have a mass of um, four grams of the CH6N2, right? Okay. Um, 
we have a we can calculate our delta t so 39.50 minus 25 is going to give us a delta t of 14.50 degrees celsius okay um let's see what else they give us the heat capacity of the calorimeter so this is the C sub cal, measured to be 7.794 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Okay, uh, and what are we looking for? The heat of reaction for the combustion, which is another way of saying the heat of combustion, okay, uh, of one mole of a mole, one mole of CH6N2. Okay, so what is heat of combustion? Well, that's kind of like, um, that's just the heat of this. It's, it's essentially the heat of this reaction, but they want it for one mole. So basically what they want, what we're looking for here is um, sorry, just had a brain spasm. Is we're looking for our Q of a, our reaction per mole CH6N2. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so, as we have here, uh, we need the Q of the reaction, right? So, Q of the reaction equals negative, this is a negative C cal delta T, right? So, they already gave us those. We don't have to do a lot of really fancy maneuvering or anything. Our CCAL, 7.794 kilojoules over degrees Celsius. Change in temp, it's already degrees Celsius, so we're good there. And we just do the math. So the Q of the reaction is negative 113. Point zero kilojoules. Okay, um, so this this amount here that's the Q for the reaction. So this is the Q of the reaction for this specific reaction, which is a reaction of combustion of four grams of the CH6 and two, right? We want it per mole, right? So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do, you can convert the grams to moles and then divide by it. I'm actually going to just set up the whole thing here. So we've got, uh, we, I'm going to do our Q of the reaction on the top. Uh, the Q of the reaction, negative 113.0 kilojoules over grams CH6N2. The amount that's in this reaction, so I move it up a little bit. Okay. And then, but I want this per mole, right? So I'm going to do a conversion. I'm going to convert from grams of CH6N2 to moles.
Remember the Gramsci rule. This this forty six point one comes from. Uh, wait. Uh, that's weird. It should just be forty six, I think, with the way we normally do it. Um, can you check it with my calculator really quick? Because yeah, it's just it would just be twelve plus six times one is six plus two times fourteen, forty six. Yeah. I don't know if that was from the book or what. 46.1, but let's do 46. Okay. And we get one, two, nine, nine point five. which if we're doing significant figures based off of this, technically it would be three and four. Well, that's kind of a pain. It would be So technically it would be, I guess the only way you could do that would be, oh, sorry, I forgot the negative almost. Um, it would be negative 1.30 times 10 to the third kilojoules per mole. Okay. With three significant figures. If you... If you did this problem and you wrote like negative 1300 kilojoules per mole, I would take that. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't mark it off or anything like that. Okay. All right. So that's it. The bomb calorimeters, if you have the information there, like, again, just watch the labels and like what they're asking for. Like you might've looked at me like, well, we don't, I don't know how to figure out the heat of reaction. Well, Break down the language, heat of reaction. That's Q of the reaction, okay? So you're looking for the Q of the reaction, but you're looking for it for one mole of this. Well, you can you found that we found the Q of the reaction for four grams, and we just convert it to moles. The grams to moles and figure out how much it is per mole. Okay, watch your labels. That helps you a lot. As usual, if you have questions, let me know. Good luck.